Tom Gregory here, and today we're in East Hampton, New York, but not to talk about diamonds or silver or gold or all those Tony things, but we're here to visit James DeMartis, who's an original American blacksmith. You know, this guy makes Mr. Goodwrench look like a sissy. Anyway, let's go see what he's got cooking on the forge today. This is not a white collar job. No, as you can see, hands are getting dirty, working up a sweat. Uh, see, I step away when I see something like that. All right, see, we're going to put this in the hammer. We're going to mash this. Making bow ties. Bending it over the horn here. Going to cup it. You're going to cup it on the horn of the yeah, anvil. Putting a cup into it. It's Fork. cooling off rapidly, but it started off about 2,500 degrees. And what would you say it is now? It's probably about uh, 1,600 now. I'm getting this up to a temperature where it's going to come out sparking. So we're going to see some sparks here, and then we're going to put it back in the hammer. This is nice and soft. I got a nice heat on that. James, that is really hot. It's really hot. I can feel the heat coming off yeah, that. I can. But that makes work so much easier. Get it nice and hot like this, hit it good and hard. You can see I got a bit more of an arc on that and how much more quickly that went too. This is a little off center. I curved this one more. I like some variation, otherwise it's dull and it looks stamped out as if a machine did it. So this is the sculpture that's in progress that's made up of those parts we just forged. This is really quite remarkable. It's all the same type of metal, yep. correct? And it's what we call mild steel. Yeah. And this brown color is rust, actually. Yeah, you really, I mean, it's got a good joint here. It's holding up. This little weld is holding up all this weight. Exactly. I wonder how high you could make it. How high do you intend to make it? Well, I want to go another, another um, revolution. Blacksmithing is the only profession, they say, that nearly invented itself out of existence by making the tools and the parts that fueled the Industrial Revolution and made the machines that nearly made the blacksmith extinct. What, what he's so, not though, clearly no. if there's six of you out here, what kept him going? Well, Custom uh, work? the, uh, the pr pursuit uh, and exploration of a, a wonderful art form, well. craft, and in, in the hands of the artists, blacksmithing is undergoing a resurgence. I'm turning the round bar square and I'm stretching it. For the whole length of the bar? For the amount that I'm gonna taper. So that heat ran out of there relatively fast. James, you know, you're built like a, a brick, you know what kind of house. Look at you, you're, you're really... You're, yeah, it adds, it adds up. But that's a lot of work that went into that. A lot of work. You a can't lot of go time. to Home Depot and buy that pre-made? You cannot, absolutely not. Really? No, you, this is the only one of its kind. Uh, well, that's, I'm, glad, I'm glad it's here with us. And I'm glad, I'm glad that you're here with us, the old, uh, old time village blackie. So James, I tried to dress like a blacksmith today. Do you think I look? You like a, got oh, the appropriate. A Hollywood blacksmith. It looks like you've done some blacksmithing yourself. Well, you someone did, did some blacksmithing. These pants are, these are overalls are probably date back to the 30s and mm -hmm. they'll continue just like blacksmithing will continue as an American art and utilitarian need in America, right? That's right. Perpetuated more and more by you, the American blacksmithing way. I feel like I will still want a horse to come by James DeMarius, <laughs> but I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna wait until somebody blows a flat on their Clyde's. <laughs> Thank you, James. Good Pleasure. meeting you. Thank you. Long live blacksmithing.